All right, I'm back talking NASCAR in the Cup Series. Race number two, and Better Health 400 Atlanta Motor Speedway. Let's get the show on the road, and we are going to start, first of all, with number track trend number one, and that is Chevy. I mean, now remember, we're not going to talk about Atlanta much, prior to 2022 okay so that's because in 2022 they did the repave and the configuration change and that's why it's more like a mini daytona talladega so that is a completely different track from 21 before to 22 to 23 so we only care about what happened. We're going to be breaking. Now, we will mention overall because, yeah, sometimes you go to a city, you go to a track, even if it's changed and you just there's something about it when you walk into that arena, you just don't have it. Otherwise, uh, in other situations, man, you can walk into that arena, you can do anything to change it, and you that's just that's your place, man. So um, that's why we'll bring it up, but it's not very important overall. The most important stats are just the last two years, and Chevy has won three of the four races since the repave and configuration. Next up, uh, Toyota, not only have they not won the last two years, but they have not won since 2013 at Atlanta. So if you're driving a Toyota, chances are you're not going to be uh, looking too good this week unless you get a break or two. Next up, two pole sitters out of four. How about that? Two, that's pretty impressive. 50% have sat on the pole. Not surprising for a track like this. A new, you know, the way they've got it changed. Very surprising because you forget about that. We talked. Remember last week we talked about the whole thing about Daytona and it doesn't matter where you start and that's the stats back that up. But wow, it's still kind of strange. But it is what it is. The facts are the facts. Okay, let's now break down drivers in alphabetical order. No AJ this week. Josh Williams is driving, I believe, as I saw Josh Williams driving for AJ this week. I'm kind of surprised about that because, again, AJ does pretty well with the drafting. But, I mean, they, they must have their reasons. Okay, so instead, we're going to start with Christopher Bell. And there's not a whole lot to go on because we have four races. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you the results. That's the best way. Best way to give you the results and the odds, current odds. We got Christopher Bell. The odds, I don't like. I don't like Christopher Bell being at 11 to 1. I don't understand why he's at 11 to 1. That's that's just not, he shouldn't be there. I mean, and look at that. He's got one top five. Uh, and, 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 and that's just, Bell has been okay on these types of tracks. He just hasn't been deserving of 11 to 1. I'm not really sure about why he's 11 to 1. Next up, that's our boy, Ryan Blaney. And he has to be, once again, at the top of your picks this week. Ryan Blaney, there are several tracks that he is going to be one of the top picks. This, once again, is it. He got no luck last week. We'll see if he can get luck this week. He does have a win in Atlanta, but not the last four. And he's been solid here, though. Those are solid numbers. So Ryan Blaney definitely has to be a top of your picks this week. Alex Bowman is driving a Chevy. But he's 25 to, well, he's 25 to 1. I shouldn't say but. That's a good thing. One top 10. That's a but. But only one top 10. And that was a 10th. And also, this is more important. He's never led a lap before top before 2022 and after. He has never led a lap at Atlanta. I just can't take anyone when I've got other options. i got a lot of other options. Just can't take Bowman when he's never led a lap, even though he's driving a Chevy. That's the thing he's got going for him. He's driving a Chevy. That's it. Chase Briscoe at 50 to 1. You got a big number on Chase. Uh, Chase, not good here. You can see, and even before six races, the last four, not the week to take Chase. Chris Busher at 25 to 1. This is definitely a play. Busher and Kozlowski, teammates. One, and we'll get to him in a little bit, one has odds half of Chris Busher. I get double the odds on Chris Busher, so why wouldn't I take Busher and not take Kozlowski? Well, I might take both. I'm not going to personally this week, but I can see why you'd want to take both if you were going to take a limited amount of drivers because you can only take a... There's about, what, six or seven drivers in that 10 to 12 to 1 range, 14 to 1 range. 
You can only take half at the most. Um, I just did not take Kozlowski. We'll get into that a little bit, but I definitely took B Busher at 25 to 1. I think those odds are just way too good to pass up. Uh, Busher, um, even last year, had his strongest appearance leading 39 laps uh, the last time he raced here. So that's important to note. And when he finished 35th and 33rd, those were wrecks. So led 39 laps with that 15th place finish last time out. And the other time that he did not wreck had a top 10. So that's why I think he's a pretty good play at 25 to 1. Kyle Busch is next. Kyle, good numbers. Matter of fact, not too many drivers can 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 have that kind of trend line. Nice trend line there. Got in, getting better each and every race. Fifth last time out. So that's an intriguing trend line. And Kyle Busch, you know he's going to be solid on these types of tracks. He's driving a Chevy. Uh, he's coming off. Uh, Matt, he's, I think he's only had 28 laps led over those four races, but not really worried about that. He has won twice at Atlanta overall. Nothing uh, since the, the repave, though, and configuration, but he's still catching on, and he's a good 14 to 1. So I'm playing him this week. Now, William Byron, here's the thing. I really think that he's getting disrespected by 12 to 1 odds. I think he should be the favorite. Okay. How, how can you not be? I mean, look at that. I mean, when, when, when he doesn't crash, he wins at this racetrack. He led, eight, he led 19 laps in, in the win last year, and he led uh, 41 laps in the race that he finished 30th. And, and wrecked there. Uh, and he led, what, um, 111 laps in the race that he, the, the first race that he won. The first time they raced here at Atlanta with the new paving, paving and uh, c configuration change. He's led 171 laps since then, since 2022. He's the best driver here. But, big but, he'd have to win two races in a row to start the season. Extremely tough to do that. Tough to win back-to-back any time. And he'd have to win three out of five. That's tough. So that's what, in my mind, moved the odds a little bit further up, where it's like, well, I think the odds are against him there. Now, and that's the reason I'm taking him just to get my money back. That's why. But if you want to take him and put big money on him this week, I got no problem. How can I, how can I uh, talk you off of that? Uh, I mean, he, he's really solid here. And he's the best. He's the best here so far. Clearly the best. Next up, Ross Chastain, 20 to 1. We saw what happened to Ross last week. We know he wasn't very good at Daytona or was not very good at Daytona. And he really was in a position that he shouldn't have been in, the lead. And we saw how that worked out. That wasn't very good. Um, but he started off really strong here in 2022 with the two runner-ups, leading a combined 74 laps. But look at last year. So I, it's it's and, and and again, I think there's enough other drivers, including his teammate, with better odds that I'd, I think I'd rather go with. A very strange line, though. I, this the race this this week is going to have big big telling for Ross Chastain in Atlanta. All right, who's next? Austin Sindrick. This is a good play. Twenty-five to one. This is a pick. If you look at Sindrick, he's raced five times Atlanta, four in the last two years. He wrecked the first time. Since then, all top 12s. He led 22 laps combined. He has an 8.6 average finish in his last three races. He's a nice play. That's why I'd rather take Sindrick than Chastain in the same area. Austin Dillon. Look at that. That's surprising, isn't it? You would think, well, come on. He's really good at Daytona. Why, why would he be so bad at Atlanta? I don't know. You know, he made a wreck twice the first year. His average is 27-7. By the way, it's Atlanta because he's never led a lap in 14 races at Atlanta. Chase Elliott's driving a Chevy. He's 12-1. to He has to be one of your plays. And he's going to be uh, for sure for me. Uh, I'm very interested. Now, look, I, I have him in my championship four. So I have him on my fantasy team. So th that's that's the reason I have him on my fantasy team. Because I believe in Chase having a bounce back. Um, but 
you know, 12 to 1 is, you know, it's not a great number. It's still kind of where it should be, okay? Because even last year when things weren't going great, it was a pretty decent showing. He led 96 laps in his win last year, and he's led 138 in the four races combined. So he's really strong here, and that's the reason. Matter of fact, I think he's second to Byron, which is why I have them both on my picks. Next up, Ty Gibbs. So here's the thing about Gibbs, all right, that you're not going to see on the board, and that is Xfinity, and this is going to be important. 28 to 1, good odds. The ninth, that's good because the 34th, first, first time out, not so good. I'm sure there was a wreck involved there. But in the Xfinity series, he was 6th in July last year, and he won the race in March of 2022. Now, he led the last lap only, but he did win. So he's been good on the Xfinity Series, good his last time out without the trouble at 34th, and you're getting 28-1, to 1, so he's one of my picks. Here's another one of my picks. Now, I don't know if you can still get 100-1, to 1, but it was 100-1 to 1 yesterday at DraftKings. And sort of like with AJ last, last week when I got him at uh, 80 and he went down to 40 like a day or two later, Haley's got to be 60 or 50 to 1 now, has to be. But he was still 100 to 1 yesterday. And look at that. All right. So when you take Justin Haley, not very often, but you have to take him here. Um, his average is 12th, okay, at this track in the four races. And throw in the Xfinity series last July, he finished fourth and led 80 laps. He also finished 10th in the Xfinity series in March in Atlanta. So definitely Haley. Absolute long shot play this week. Denny Hamlin, one of the favorites, but I just can't go with Hamlin. Not at 10 to 1, not as the favorite. We talked last week about his troubles recently at Daytona. They've continued. And to tell you the truth, it's continuing here too. So the the the, the, the drafting is not working out for Denny Hamlin luck wise. Uh, and right now it's just not the time to take him, especially at that number. Keeping in mind, in 27 races at Atlanta, one win. So, no, I'm not taking Denny Hamlin at 10 to 1. Daniel Hamrick is 100 to 1, but I'll take him because I'm getting 100 to 1. I'll put a buck on him. He's on my picks. Why not? I'll tell you why. He did race in the Cup Series in 2019, finished 20th. But most importantly, uh, if you look at the Xfinity Series, and by the way, of course, he's never run. In the, in the two years with the new uh, pave and configuration. In the Xfinity Series, he's been really strong. Last year, both runner-up finishes. Didn't lead a lap, but both runner-up finishes. And in 2022, one of the races, he finished fifth. The other race, I believe he wrecked. So in the three races, Xfinity, three top fives. If he doesn't wreck, two runner-ups. And he'll be here for the first time in the Cup Series with the, you know since 2022. I'm definitely taking him as a long shot at 100 to 1. Eric Jones is 22 to 1. Another driver that I'm going to take over, say, Ross Chastain, Ross Chastain and a few others in this area. Um, and that's because his average is 9.2. That's a very strong average. Look at that. Four races, they've all been in the running, and you're getting 22 to 1. So, yes, Eric Jones is the one I'll take over uh, some of these drivers like Chastain and a few others we're going to get to. Here's one of the favorites I'm not taking, and that's Kozlowski. I understand why you would take him. I'm not against him, but like I said, he can only take so many of these guys. Um, and he he was really strong last year, as was the team last year. So the year before, 2022, the team wasn't good. They weren't very good here. Last year, the team was good. They were good here. Um, matter of fact, they let it combine 66 laps last year. What am I going to do? If he wins, well, I'm going to bow to Brad Kozlowski, but it's just, it, it, like, it's, it's just the way, it's the way it is. I mean, you can take him, and I have no problem with that, but you can't take everybody, and I'm just going with some other drivers, that's all. I don't get this. I just really don't. Look at this. Can we just, can we stop? When, when are we going to stop? Really? Look at this. He's 14 to 1. 
Why? Because he's driving a Chevy? I got Bowman at 25 to 1 driving a Chevy I'd rather take than Larson. I got 25 to 1 over 14 to 1, and Bowman actually looks better. I don't get this. I just don't. Like I said before, he's going to win probably one of these years drafting, and he's going to get lucky doing it. But go ahead. And, you know, because here's the deal if he wins one of these things and, 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 it's, and it's by luck, his odds are going to go down even more. So the way you play Larson, in my mind, at the drafting situation, is just never take him ever. Okay, he'd have to, if he were to win, he'd have to actually, the next time or two, he'd actually like be top five, top ten, showing that he's actually done something. The guy doesn't even like drafting. So, I mean, he tells you he doesn't like this type of racing. He never is competitive in these things. Why would you go with Kyle Larson at 14 to 1? I haven't the slightest idea. Especially when I can take Corey LaJoy at 40 to 1. Look at that. He's got two top fives. Now, this is really the track to take him. I know he's at his best at these tracks, but this is where he's just better. He's got the two top fives. And here's the interesting thing the top fives came in the first race of the year at Atlanta. I don't know why, but the 31 and 21, that's like later in the year. The four and the five, that's this race. So. If you want to take Corey LaJoy at Atlanta, you're going to do it now. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. Joey Logano is next. And uh, Joey did not make my list, but he was one of those drivers that, like Kozlowski, that I was just... Matter of fact, if I was going to take someone, I would take Logano over Kozlowski. I would. Now, he's got the win. Kozlowski doesn't. Matter of fact, he led 140 laps on the pole last year in that win. And so we know Joey Logano can draft. We know. And he's 10 to 1 for a reason. He's definitely a better option in my mind than Hamlin at this point. So, yeah, it was tough for me not to take Logano. But I don't have to say it again, do I? Michael McDowell, strong his last time out, finishing fourth. But um, I, I just like some others in the list. I think he's a decent long shot. I do. But I, I just like others. But the, the, the fact that McDowell... It can definitely be one of those long shots if things go well and there's a whole bunch of chaos. Now, I don't anticipate the chaos, of course, like Talladega or Daytona. That that's uh, that's uh, It's just not the type of track. It's not big enough like that. But, uh, you know, and then I think that's, that's what we'll probably need uh, in order to win a race like this. But I would not, uh, if you want to bet him in the top five or the top ten, I'd go that route. John Hunter Nemechek. That's right. We're going to put a couple of bucks on John Hunter Nemechek at 50 to 1. And why are we doing that? He's never raced in the Cup Series at Atlanta before. Well, look at that. Xfinity run last year. First and eighth. That's the reason I'm doing it. So he raced. And that's the only time he's ever raced at Atlanta. Okay. Xfinity or Cup. And he looked really strong. So, look, until he actually shows that he can race in the Cup Series as a regular and show that he can race consistently enough in the top 10, these are the race. This is it. Right now, this is when I'll take him. So, he's in my, he's in my, uh, he's on my list. Ryan Priest. Actually, this is, I shouldn't have even popped this up because this was from Daytona. Yeah, Ryan Priest, he's not on my list. Uh, Ryan. Uh, has never had a top 20 ever in six starts at Atlanta. So, uh, yeah, I shouldn't have done that. Uh, Tyler Reddick, if you look at him, Reddick, who we thought was a pretty decent long shot last week, this week, uh, again, at 20 to 1, there were others I like, like Jones and Busher and Sindrick and even Gibbs. And a couple others, and then some of the long shots. So I'm going to stay away from Reddick here. Uh, he, he, you know, he, he doesn't lead laps at all, and he's wrecked and been involved in incidents like what two or three of the races. So yeah, not a twenty to one. He should be thirty to one. Uh, Ricky Stenhouse. Did I put Ricky here? Uh, Ricky, who we know can draft. I think we got him here. Ricky at 40 to 1, 10th last time out. Almost had the got better each race deal. Almost. He's a pretty good long shot contender. I'm not going to pick him, 
But he's he, you should definitely consider him at 40 to 1. Now, here's a driver I will take around the same odds range, and that's Daniel Suarez, Chase Chastain's teammate. Why am I taking Suarez over Chastain? Two reasons. One, both drove really well in 2022, as you can see, but Suarez backed it up with a runner-up in two races last year. Chastain did not. And I'm getting 30 to 1 over Chastain's 20 to 1. So that's the reason why I'm going to take uh, Suarez and not take Chastain. So not bad getting 30 to 1 on a driver that's been sixth or better in three of the four races. Martin Truex Jr., we went ahead and, and, and put a couple of bucks on him at Daytona. Even though the odds are just dropping too much for him. Matter of fact, they dropped last week too far. I mean, they got him down to like 16 to 1 last week. And this week, 16 to 1. I mean, come on. That's just now you're getting crazy. Now you're starting to get to Kyle Larson territory. All right. The guy has not had any success drafting. And look at the line, by the way. It's the opposite of Kyle Bush. That's not what you want to see. He's gotten worse each time out here at Atlanta. No, not at 16 to 1. And then the last driver is Bubba Wallace. And Bubba has actually shown more than you see in the results here. And and I th but he's 18 to 1, and that's the reason why I'm not taking him. If you're going to give me 25 or 30 to 1 based on those results, that's what it should be and his history. I just, yeah, not at 18 to 1. I mean, some of these odds are just, I can't take them. They're the picks. All right? So there you go. CJ's picks. CJ's picks came in late last week. He did have Byron in his picks. So he did make, I think, 50-something bucks on the, on the week. So, But CJ is going to have his picks each week because he had them last year. Um, but there you go. CJ's picks each week. Again, Eric's working officially for IndyCar, so we can't get into the gambling with Eric, But um, even though it's NASCAR. And uh, there I am uh, with my picks. So those are my official picks on the right, and those are CJ's picks on the left. And as far as top picks, because this is important, let me make sure I've got uh, CJ's top picks. should have had him here lined up. I believe... Uh, uh, yeah, I think he, CJ had Blaney, and he had Logano and Elliott. Those are his top three picks, Blaney, Logano, and Elliott. And his long shot is Eric Jones. That's his top long shot. My top three would be Blaney. My th they're obvious because look at the big money here. Blaney, Kyle Busch, and if I had a third, I would do Busher. That makes sense, right? There's the 200, the 280, the two sets. So I do Blaney one, Bush two, Busher three, and my uh, long shot would be Haley. Haley would be my top long shot. And if his numbers drop, like I think they will, and if they get too close to Suarez, I would take Suarez. But if they stay, even if they're double than Suarez, I'd, I'd take Haley. All right. That's it. I'm out of here. In Las Vegas next week, if I'm because uh, they usually they used to go out on the West Coast right away, so I, I think it's interesting that they go back to back drafting races. I don't think they've done this before, so anyway, usually I have Eric around here to fill me in with that kind of stuff. So anyway, if you have any questions or comments, let me know. If you have any specific questions or comments about anything, uh, stats, trends, odds. Uh, you can also check us out on our Discord channel. We can communicate there. Uh, but uh, we welcome the comments on the on the videos. Subscribe to our new Mystery Caution channel. And uh, when you subscribe there, don't unsubscribe on Prime Sports Network either. That's because uh, we still are going to have a lot of stuff for you there too. That's going to wrap it up. Uh, best of luck, everybody, and we'll talk to you next week.